key and I can still taste your croissant. It was that sweet. I thought I put 10 grams of sugar in. I put 50 grams of sugar in mine. Oh, I meant 50, yeah. I hope that basically all of the sugar was just in one part of the dough and Guillaume's will taste fine. <laughs> mine barely has any sugar in it, which I, I kind of like not having much sugar in it. He's I'm going to that. judge it on three categories, giving each a score out of 10 and then average it. The three categories being uh, texture, flavor, and presentation. There's only one thing missing. Alexa, play some French music. Okay, so he's off. This is going to be the final setup of, uh, of the taste testing. Um, Here's the shot. I'm about to join the Zoom call. Hello. And the guy has everyone. There's like this. It's like gang of guys, and they're like trademark Thanks. things. They all have greasy and hair, and they comb it with in. combs all day. They have a pocket comb. Mm -hmm. and they just go oh, all Gilles. day. Gilles here, Gilles here. Big moment. Big moment. Do you have an intro? Music intro. Oh, I've got four percent battery, by the way. I am charging it, but you never know what could happen. Guillaume, say hi, hi to behind the, the scenes, scenes guys. guys. Hi behind the scenes. Okay, um, so bye sad. behind the scenes. I'm gonna start filming it actually now. So bye. So, right, it's time for the taste testing, the big moment, the culmination of all three parts of the croissant making series. Guillaume just cringed at my pronunciation of that word. Speaking of which, we are joined by the resident Frenchman himself, Hello. Mr. Guillaume. Say hi to the world. Hello, everyone. Hello, world. Um, finally, the Frenchman has made an appearance. We and have... I'm here to eat some croissant. I'm going to start in alphabetical order. That makes sense. Croissant number A. Okay, well, for croissant A, just start oh, by saying... You can't see them. Yes, I'll hold it up. Oh, yeah. There you go. I'm going to give this one a score. I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, it's nice and symmetrical, not too symmetrical. It has a nice uh, little bump in the middle. And it seems like it has a nice consistency. So, we'll see. Croissant number B. Let's show you the camera. Again. Has a good shape, has a very classic croissant shape. Looks a bit more, I don't know, looks a bit more like a, like it's been sort of rolled slightly too much. So uh, yeah, it has, doesn't have the, that, those, that di di distinct shape that this one had. So I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Croissant number C is this one. Um, first of all, I'm gonna say this is a, I'm gonna give it a four out of 10 presentation. <laughs> it's uh, not very symmetrical. Um, and it's just, it just looks like, I don't know, like a balloon, almost, I don't know. Um, it ha also has, I don't know, is it a little bit missing? Is that, is that just me? A little bit missing? I don't know. Does someone have a bite? Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so, moving on. Croissant number D. Um, Letter D. Yeah. Looks nice, it has pointy, pointy sides. Um, it's, uh, some would say it's burnt, but I, I, I would disagree. I think this is, uh, this is ju just about uh, perfectly well cooked. Um, uh, but it, it does look a bit burnt. Uh, so still, again, it has a nice, you can see nice rolls. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Number E or letter E, it's quite heavy. It's, uh, I think it's probably the heaviest croissant we have here. It's, it has, you can see the nice rolls. Uh, it's not very symmetrical, but it doesn't have to be. So that's fine. Um, but again, it's, it looks well cooked, it looks, the rolls look nice, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, again. And then F, here we are, uh, this kind of looks like a crab, um, not the uh, classic French uh, shape, but it, it looks good, so you can really clearly see the rolls, it's nice and symmetrical, maybe slightly a bit too, too cooked on the bottom, but not bad. 8 out of 10 presentation. Uh, I think what's what it's lacking is, is the main, you know, shape, the main straight shape of the croissant. Maybe it's made with margarine. Maybe. Now, the next step of this taste test is just have a bite of each one and give it a flavor and texture rating. Yeah. Okay, so, hey, first taste test. Here we go, take a bite. I'm gonna take a bite of this side, and then it looks better. Crunch. 
good crunch, good sort of good amount of air bubbles. Could maybe do more, but it's not bad for flavor. I bet it has a nice sort of not not too sweet flavor, um, but ju just sweet enough. I'd give it a eight out of ten for flavor. Texture, well, I think it's um, I think it has a good texture, so I'm going to give it a again eight out of ten. For texture. Croissant B. Here. Okay, so first of all, a massive air bubble, which would be nice, but it's quite uneven. So the taste, first of all, um, it, it's quite bland, to be honest. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 for taste. For texture, uh, the texture is nice, it's nice and soft, it has a good amount of air bubbles. 7 out of 10 for texture. C. Uh, I'm gonna bite the bit that hasn't already been bitten off. This one has very good air bubbles, very even. So the taste, um, well, it's quite, I don't know, it sort of crumbles when you eat it. Um, so I'd give the taste, and again, it's maybe a bit more bland than A, for example, so give it a 6 out of 10 for flavor. And for texture, similar to B again, but I feel like it has less of a, it's slightly too soft, I'd say, so I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Croissant D. Nice air bubbles. The flavor is quite, um, it's quite nice, it's quite crunchy. Ever so slightly burnt taste to it. Still, I give it a um, 7 out of 10 for flavor. And the texture, again, the sort of the burnt element gives it it's slightly almost too, um, the shell is almost too hard. So I'd give it a 5 out of 10. E. Here we are. First of all, not many air bubbles. Um, good amount of folds. The taste is quite, it's quite nice. I mean, I'd um, have something more cooked, but apart from on the inside, but apart from that, I give it a seven out of 10 flavor. Texture, well, and the main problem is that it's, it's quite, um, it's quite a dense croissant. So I think I'd give it a, um, Six out of ten. And now croissant F, the crab-looking one. Okay, almost perfect air bubbles. For flavor, I mean, it has a. It, it brings out the uh, almost every ingredient uh, is brought up, which is nice. It tastes almost less fresh than the others. So even though the taste is good, I still give it an eight out of ten. And the texture. Again, 8 out of 10, I think has a solid texture. Next is, I want you to, to guess uh, which one you think is which. B and C are the Paul and Tesco croissant. Which one do you think is which? I think C is a Tesco and B is Paul. I think F is the Melvia. I think E is, I think e is Edwards. I think between D and A, I think I can maybe, I, I may be wrong, but I can maybe sort of taste the nice, uh, French flower in D. Uh, I may, may be wrong, but I feel, I feel like D might be Thomas's and A might be Kian's. You got all of the homemade ones correct. In you could probably be tasted the French flower. You got Malveo correct. You got Paul and Tesco's the wrong way around. C is Paul. Wait, so this one is Paul? Yeah, the one with one that end bit, bitten out. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. It wasn't actually bitten out, it was just like, not cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I know, I know. It's I'm surprised, uh, Tesco did a lot better than I thought. Apart from the massive, you can see like, half of it is just air. This is actually very good news, because what we can conclude is that homemade croissants are better than any sort of supermarket or cafe croissant that you will get in the UK. And they are close in standard to Le Marveilleux. So it's such a shame because if, you, if you'd if you cooked it just a tiny bit less, it, it would have been- I had another one that was less cooked. I didn't, I cook that one because- Oh, that was, was unlucky because it would have been probably as good if maybe even better than, than Kian's. We can happily say that homemade croissants are better than store-bought, except for if you're going to the best, uh, so-called, according to Guillaume, ranked the best uh, croissant in London. That, that, that I've had, that I've had. Again, like, this is not, like, the, the, I, I'm not the scale for croissant. I am a scale. 
You are a metric. Um, so yeah, Kian, yeah, sorry, but the, the, the scores may be equal, but the Melvin year is still, is still better, unfortunately. Fair, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Right, thank you so much for watching this three-part croissant series, and uh, uh, thank you for making it all the way to the end. You know, this is the uh, the final video. We've done the taste test, and everything is now complete. And we have concluded that you should learn how to make croissants. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on all of the latest Chameleon Productions releases. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>